Hello and welcome to the second unboxing video where I'm going to be unboxing everything that I got during May of 2017. Now, this episode is going to be probably a little bit longer than usual because I think when I did the last episode, uh, everybody that had something sitting around suddenly remembered, oh yeah, I needed to send that to the 8-bit guy. So, let's dig right into this. The first package is from Haven Johnson out of Boca Raton, Florida. Well, let's see what we have. Awesome! This is a 1351 mouse for the Commodore 64. I've been needing one of these for a while, and this is the last piece of the puzzle of extra items I've needed before I can do a proper review of this Messiah cartridge that I've had sitting around for a year. Apparently it comes with the manual and original floppy disk. And the mouse itself looks to be in great condition, so thank you very much, Haven. On to the next package. This is from Stephen Greer out of Southampton, Wisconsin. And I think I know what's in here, but I'll keep it to myself. Yep, as I thought, this is a Commodore 1541-2 disk drive. This is great because I've been wanting to do a documentary on all of the Commodore disk drives, and I just have a few models I'm missing. So this is one less missing piece. And this one appears to be in great shape, so thank you very much, Steven. Okay, so we have a fairly large box here from Paul King. Apparently I needed a subscription to Consumer Reports. <laughs> okay, so it looks like he sent me a box of floppy disks. Not sure if these are blank. It looks like some of these have programs on them. And here is an Atari 810 floppy drive. I have to admit, I've never seen one of these in person. Holy cow, this thing looks delightfully archaic. Wow, I have never seen such a big opening for a floppy disk. It almost looks like a big cartridge is supposed to go in there. Looks like he sent the power supply and the interface cable. And this is awesome, and this will go great with my Atari 400 and 800 computers. So, a big thank you to Paul. And I got another box a few days later from Haven, and I think he said something about sending me some Atari games. Oh look, another copy of Pitfall in Grand Prix, which I did not have. This will be interesting to sit next to the Pitfall cartridge I just relabeled in my last episode. Here's another package from Paul King, and... Oh cool! Worms! And also Summer Games and Blue Max. All of these are for the Atari 8-bit. Believe it or not, I had this game as a kid on my Commodore 64, and it was a Christmas present from one of my relatives, and the funny thing is, I hated it. <laughs> so, I could never figure out how to play it. In fact, if you look at the instructions on the inside, it actually tells you right here, do not read the instructions. <laughs> so, uh, and it really doesn't even actually come with any, so I, I could never figure it out, but I'm gonna give it another shot, and maybe as an adult, Maybe I'll be able to figure it out now. Okay, so I have a package here from Hans. Uh, sorry, I can't pronounce the last name. Anyway, this is from Norway, and I know what this is. Uh, I had a few offers for similar products after I announced my C64 had been fried. So these are called 64 savers, and the idea is you plug this in between the power supply and the C64, and it has some circuitry inside that will protect your C64 from a rogue power supply like the one I had. I'll be covering this in more detail very soon, so thank you, Hans. This one is from Roderick Klein out of the Netherlands. And by the way, I know how much it costs to ship this stuff overseas. I was going to ship a small package to EEV Blog in Australia a few weeks ago. I even had it all boxed up. And when I went to ship it, I found the cheapest I could ship. It was almost $100. But the item was only worth about $10, so I just decided not to send it. Anyway, uh, it appears he sent me a Gravis Ultrasound. I've had a lot of requests to show one of these, but I haven't had one to show. And now that I do, I still can't show it because I don't have a computer with a 16-bit ISA slot. But I will eventually, so thank you very much, Roderick. Well, rats, it turns out my camera wasn't recording and I've already partially opened this, uh, but this is from Geir or Gear, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. But anyway, it's from Norway. And uh, I bet this was also super expensive to ship because it's very heavy. So it's a grid laptop. I've never seen this particular model in person before. 
It appears to be a 386 and has dual floppy drives. These are probably high density, so they should be easier to transfer data. And it looks like it has an internal power supply. Well, I look forward to playing with this, so thank you very much. Alright, so this is probably the largest box I've ever received as a donation. And I know what's in here, but I'll save the suspense for you. This is from Benjamin Rumor out of Scottsdale, Arizona. And it's a keyboard! It's surprising how many people still don't know I have another channel where I review and restore vintage keyboards. Anyway, this one is a quite nice one. It's a Korg Poly 800. This is from 1983 and I am definitely looking forward to playing with this. So thank you Benjamin. This is the most generous donation. Next we have a little box from Power Pig Productions. I have no idea what this is. In fact, I'm wondering if this is a donation or all or something I ordered on eBay. Sometimes I can't tell when I get these things in. Logically, if it were something I ordered, then it wouldn't have made it into the final edit, so we can assume it is a donation. <laughs> okay, thank you for purchasing a custom LEGO building kit. I eventually discovered this was a drop shipment from Lauren Millsap. Apparently it's a LEGO Atari 2600. I didn't even know that existed, so thank you Lauren. The next package is also from Lauren. Excellent! A logic probe. I believe he sent this to me to help with uh, diagnosing my dead C64 as well as some of the other projects I've been working on. Now I know what the logic probe does, but I have to admit I'm not entirely sure what a pulsar does. I'll have to read up on that. Anyway, thank you Lauren. Okay, so here's a fairly heavy package from Garrick Vance. I see some old Mac stuff here. Looks like some old manuals. Oh look, an Apple II floppy drive. Looks like an ADB mouse. An old serial external modem. Another ADB keyboard. I already have one like this, but I can use another. Oops, it has a broken key. Maybe I can fix that. And it looks like an original LC. This will go well with the LC2 that I received last month. I need to open up and see what this mysterious looking card is. Oh wow, is that what I think it is? Surely not. Oh wow, it is. Check it out, the Apple IIe card. These are rare and hard to find these days. I can't wait to get this thing working. So a big thanks to Garrick. Okay, the next package here is from Travis Foster. Yay, grocery bags. Oh wow, this is cool. This bag is small, but there's a lot of stuff in here, starting with a Sega Game Gear, apparently, and some games. So the screen is a bit scratched up, but this will be an excellent thing to demonstrate a new method I found out about for polishing these types of screens. So it looks like I got a whole bunch of different Sonic games, which I guess was the staple of the Sega franchise. Admittedly, I haven't played most of these. Okay, now this, I have no idea what this is. Okay, it appears to be a vintage calculator. In fact, I'll stick some batteries in here and we'll, we'll see what it does. Wow, so it has a vacuum fluorescent screen. It's probably easier to see in the dark without the glare. So it only has six digits. And wow, I love how the screen does weird things when it's calculating. It makes me wonder if they use screen memory for part of the calculation routines. It's also weird how the zero is only half height. Anyway, that's a neat collectible. Back to this bag now. Looks like I got another Game Boy Pocket. Oh, and awesome, the Game Boy Camera. I've been wanting to get one of these. I'll definitely be doing a review on this. And it looks like several more games. Some of these I already had and uh, some I did not. Anyway, great collection of stuff, so thank you, Travis. Next package is from Michael out of Phoenix, Arizona. According to the paper, apparently I'm getting a penultimate cartridge. I've wanted one of these for a long time. Looks like I also got some sort of cassette base game for the VIC-20. The label's a bit hard to read. Apparently it's called Pentagorat. I've never actually heard of this, but I'm excited to try it out. 
But this cartridge, yes, this is probably the coolest thing you can get for your VIC-20. I won't say too much about it because I plan to do a whole video on this, but I will tell you it has a ton of built-in game ROMs and expansion RAM, so I look forward to reviewing this in more detail. These are not cheap either, so a big thank you to Michael for sending me this. Ok, next box is from Chris Castillo, or Castillo, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I'll continue using my trusty pocket knife. Somebody said in the comments of the last video that they were going to send me band-aids for when I cut myself, but that hasn't happened yet. Alright, looks like some Coleco controllers. This is great because I have a Coleco, but I never use it because the controllers are borked. Hopefully these will work. And here we have a Commodore Plus 4. Needs a little retro bright on the keys, but otherwise looks in great shape. The Plus 4 has a really interesting story, and I hope to do a video on this line of computers at some point. So, a big thanks to Chris. Next box is kind of heavy for its size, and uh, it's from Joe McPhail. And to be honest, I couldn't remember what was in here. Ah yes, my memory has been jogged. So, these are some old punch cards. I remember him telling me he was going to send me a few, I didn't realize it would be quite this many. I'm not sure how these work, since it appears to be based on 9 bits instead of 8. Maybe one is for parity or something. I'll have to read up on it. Anyway, thank you, Joe. Ok, so this box says it is from Heather Kent, but it's actually a dropship from Lawrence. And this is another product that was sent to me as a result of my fried Commodore 64. So this is actually a little kit that you build and allows you to use aftermarket power adapters on your C64, avoiding the problem with the failing original power bricks altogether. I'll be showing this in more detail in a later video, so thank you Lawrence. Ok, somebody sent me some Skechers shoes apparently. <laughs> so this is from Christian, and I think I'll pass on trying to pronounce that last name. It's a TRS-80 Model 100, which will go well with my Model 102 and 200 that I already have. As soon as I can find a 600, then I'm going to do a video on the entire series. Alright, very generous, so thank you Christian. Ok, so this is the last package for this episode, and this is quite heavy. Honestly, I'm not even sure what's in here. This is from Jerome, and I know he said it was a bunch of Tandy color computer stuff. Ok, so there's quite a bit of stuff crammed in here. Looks like some rolls of thermal paper, and this must be the printer that goes with it. And another little printer or plotter, I'm not sure. And a little joystick. Of course, Tandy computers had their own proprietary interface. And here's a floppy drive. And what's this? Another floppy drive. And these things are heavy too. Alright, let me make some space here. A color computer too. And here's the floppy drive controller cartridge. And apparently this is a box of discs for it. And these are some original dust covers, and some manuals. Oh, and this is handy, it's the cassette port cable, which can in theory let me load stuff from an iPhone or other computer using the audio port. So, all very cool. Thank you, Jerome. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. I am really uh, amazed at people's generosity when it comes to sending me these things because many of the things that have been sent to me I know could have fetched a pretty good price on eBay had they chosen to sell it that way instead of donating it to me. So thank you very much. Um, many of these items you will probably be seeing um, in upcoming episodes in more detail when I do uh, detailed reviews of them. So stick around for that and uh, hope you enjoyed this. See you next time.